Hello everybody, this is Sandy from your Railroads Online team again. I hope you're all doing fine. Today I will inform you about the new local ferries and cliff house, about some new skins we added for some of our locals, about our new farm industry chain, some new features and bug fixes, and I will give you a short outlook of what we are planning next. So let's go! In our buy menu, right after the 10 mile, you can find our new tier 2 engine, the Ferris and Cliff House. We thought a lot about which engines to prioritize for the upcoming updates and wanted to balance a few considerations, uniqueness, gameplay niche and community interest. We decided to do a small, medium and large plan, offering a little something for everyone in the coming updates. The first of these is our newest engine, the small but stylish Ferris and Cliff House Railway 242 tank engine. These speedy little engines ran along a 4 mile coastal excursion line near San Francisco, California. We were interested in adding a new tank engine as it's an often requested class. We immediately knew that the Ferris was the right choice as its wheel arrangement is very unique. Its high speed and intermediate power allows for more variety in the early game, and we all fancied the unique look of the engine. The Ferris comes with seven different styles with plenty of headlamps and smokestack options to customize. We hope you all enjoy the new tank engine and we're looking forward to see your fast freight and passenger trains. We also added new looks to some of our locos. The Class 48 received two new styles, the DNRG black and yellow skin and a pretty cool used look, which we also added to our Ruby Basin and the Coke 260 coal engine. Now I will present you our new farm industry chain. We started last month with our wheat farm and as the implementation worked really well, we added three more industries. To show you the entire industry chain in a short video, I placed all four industries side by side and already prepared all cars we need. I also added a coal mine nearby as we need coal for the last industry. First of the new industry chain is our water well, which you can see here. Then we have our wheat farm you already know from the last update. Here you can see our new cattle farm. And then we fly over to the meatpacking plant, which is the last point of this new industry chain, where we will load meat boxes and bring them to the freight depot. The wheat farm first only needed seed pellets you received from the freight depot. Now our first industry of this chain is a nice water well. You will get water here for the wheat farm, which is now also needed to receive grain and straw bales there. To load water for the wheat farm and for the cattle farm, you have to use our new water tank car. In our buy menu you find the water tank car. You can customize it like the other cars. And it has nine different paint schemes. To transport water you can also use the Oahu Sugar Company water tank car, which is also customizable and available in seven different paint schemes. Once you brought your water tanker to the water well, you climb up, open the lid, pull the spell towards you, climb down, and open the hand valve to start the loading process of the water. Now you can see the water is loading into the water car. When you're done and the water tank car is full, you close the hand valve again, climb up, push away the spout and close the lid. Now you have enough water you can bring to the wheat farm. To get grain and straw at the wheat farm, we also need seed pellets. Those are available for free at the freight depot. Seed pellets can be loaded into the box car or into the Greg sugarcane flat car. 
So I already started the loading process at the freight depot. And as you can see now, to save some loading time, all of our cranes now load three items at once. Now we have all we need for the wheat farm to make it produce straw and grain. So let's move over to unload the goods. Arriving at the wheat farm, you see the water reservoir at the side of it. Stop beside it, go next to the water tanker and start the unloading process by hitting enter. A little bit forward, you find the ramp to unload the seed pallets. Once you have unloaded all the seed pallets and the water, the wheat farm starts producing grain and straw bales, which we need for the cattle farm. For the loading and unloading process on the other side, I already prepared the entire train. This is also a good opportunity to test our new ferries and cliff house. To load grain and straw bales, you need the boxcar and the flat car. I also prepared a fully loaded water tank car for the cattle farm we will visit afterwards. And prepared our new ventilated boxcar, which we need later at the meat packing plant. Loading grain and straw bales was already shown in my last video, so I will skip this part and move directly to our new cattle farm. The cattle farm requires straw bales, water and grain to grow the cows. First I unload the straw bales. The flat car fits well in between the box car and the water tank car, so I can unload the grain into the grain bin and the water into the water reservoir without moving the train again. Now the cows have everything they need to grow. To load the cows, we need the stock car that is in the game for a while already. As we will transport the cows to the meat packing plant afterwards, I have also loaded coal as this is required to produce meat. To start the loading process of the cows, simply click on the ramp. Three cows will enter the stock car at once to shorten the loading process. Now we drive with the cows to the meat packing plant. You can unload the coal at the coal bin. And the cows at the ramp. Now meat will be produced. I will pick up my train on the other side as we need the ventilated box car for loading the boxes with cans. So let's go over to the meat packing plant. Here you see our new ventilated boxcar. 
In the buy menu you can customize it like the other cars and it is available in six different paint schemes. The ventilated boxcar can load 36 boxes, again the crane will load 3 at once. Now we are ready with loading and drive to our final point of our journey, which is the freight depot. Here you can sell the meat boxes and gain money and XP. To give you the opportunity to create your own individual world, we also added new props. For example, a hay fork, a can, a bin and some new cards. You find them in the construction menu under props. The new ones start with SM underline. So we hope you enjoyed the new update, let us know your thoughts about the update and we are looking forward to your feedback and your screenshots. So we added some new features which I will show you now on the beautiful map of Tishtogi. Thank you for that! We shrank John a little bit so his head does not stick through the roof of the smaller locus anymore. We also adapted the crouch position to have a better view while driving. When switching to the driving menu with the default button F, you will see an updated UI. We are working over the entire UI and these are the first visible steps for you. Please be aware that this is a functional placeholder for now and is not the final design. In the three bars you can see the fuel, the water in the boiler, not in the water tank, and how much sand you still have. The lids now show how much water you have in your water tank. To shorten loading times, all cranes and cattle ramps load three items at once. If your car has less capacity or storage is almost empty, the cranes adapt the freight quantity. As you can see, there are two more rails left in the storage, which the crane now loads onto the car. We switched to UE 5.3 and could finally resolve the brake bug. As you can see here, the brake force is applied in a linear way again. Mm -hmm. 
Coal and water consumption can be now adapted in the gameplay menu under fuel consumption. The low setting is the current consumption, medium and high apply a factor two of 2 and 4. In the graphics menu you can now set the field of view and choose between DX11 and DX12 graphics settings. Adjust your DirectX versions requires a game restart. The wiki will now show Imperial units only and match the values in the buy menu. We made a few minor adjustments as well. We adjusted the speed for class 70 and the Cook 260 and added a cutoff simulation so steam locomotives now reach the top speed only when the reverser is close to neutral. The collision of the big rocks in the desert are active again so they can be cut with the saw again. In the Lima and the Class 48, the cutouts for water were missing and are now visible. We also fixed the invisible wall at the oil refinery and at the sawmill, as well as the incorrect translations. The adjustments in the menus will be saved now, for example audio menu, camera sensitivity and host draw settings. We fixed FPS loss when cutting down trees on Pine Valley and the issue where locomotives and cars would be slightly derailed when buying them from the store. We also fixed the issue where there was a text under the Coop 260 coal and the issue with the crack stake flat no longer held raw iron. Clients do not longer see the seed pellets when loading grain into the boxcars and we fixed the issue where some freight would bounce off the of the freight depot and land back in the cars. So that's it with the new features and bug fixes for this update. Now I will give you a short outlook about what is planned next. The next regular update is planned for February 2024, which will be a bigger intermediate update with a broad variety of contents. As we received a lot of useful feedback during the free weekend event, we will try to further improve the quality of life features of the game. This will be beneficial for our experienced players as well as for our new players. Furthermore, our partner Black Sheep has made a lot of progress in the last weeks with the refactoring of the game. Most of those changes were done to the codebase and therefore can't be directly seen yet. However, we have some interesting improvements in the pipeline including possible fix for the multiplayer popcorning effect, which we hope to share with you as soon as possible. Last but not least, we also have started with the UI and map update. The first preview of 2D art done by a professional designer has been forwarded to us and we are truly amazed of how it looks. On the more technical side of the UI, we are currently in the process of creating a brand new interactive 2D map as well. We will inform you in detail about the next update in the separate devlog in January, where we hope to provide you with some interesting information about those topics. The entire Railroads Online team, Astrogon Entertainment and Black Sheep Studio wish you a wonderful Christmas time and a great start into the new year. See you all again in 2024. Bye bye! Railroads Online. Take your train. Now available in Steam Early Access.